Cool. I will. Uh, I'll really quickly introduce our next speaker to everybody. Our next speaker is Carmen Chung. Carmen is senior product manager at Linktree, a market leading uh, linking platform with over 15 million users worldwide. Um, prior to product management, Carmen was a corporate lawyer, software engineer, and finalist in rising technologist category of the Booking.com Technology Playmaker Awards. Um, Carmen, you're deeply interested in working with others to solve real world problems with fresh creative tech solutions. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, if, if anyone has questions for Carmen, um, you can pop them in the chat and Carmen uh, will cover them if we have time, uh, but Carmen's details are also included in her slides if you want to get in touch. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, Chris. So as Chris mentioned, my name is Carmen and I'm a senior product manager at Linktree. And today I'm here to talk to you about how the no code movement is transforming the tech industry. We're going to be talking about what the no code, low code movement is, why there's so much hype about it, how it relates to APIs, and what it means for the tech industry that we're in. I'll be tweeting out these slides later. So if you do want to copy, um, please feel free to follow or DM me on Twitter, where I'm at Carmen H. Chung. Um, unfortunately, this presentation does go for the full 30 minutes, so probably a bit hard pressed to get the QA in. But if you reach out to me online, I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Great. So let's get into it. What is the no-code movement? So the no-code movement refers to the rise of platforms that provide non-technical people with the tools to create software, often using a visual builder instead of having to write code. No code is essentially an abstraction layer and it often takes advantage of an integrations ecosystem or a marketplace. One thing that I do wanna note is that while you hear me refer today to the no code movement, a lot of the same principles apply to the low code movement. So low code tools usually require some degree of coding ability in order to unlock additional customization. As a result, low code is often more focused on helping developers build a flow to automate tasks contributing to making the developer experience a bit more seamless. So why is there so much hype about it? The no-code movement rests upon the fundamental belief that technology should be an enabler of product creation rather than a barrier to entry. It offers easy to implement building blocks and pre-made components that can be quickly assembled together to suit most needs. According to research agency Forrester, the no-code movement will be worth a whopping $21.2 billion by next year. And research and advisory firm Gartner estimates that by 2024, which is not that far off, low-code will be responsible for more than 65% of app development. Now, without needing to know how to write a single line of code or hire expensive developers, people are building chatbots in VoiceFlow connecting multiple applications and building automated workflows in Zapier, developing customized internal tooling to improve business processes through Airtable, and running large-scale e-commerce businesses on Bubble and Webflow. Now, I know what you're probably all thinking. No code and low-code tools aren't anything new. Why all the hype now? And I think one of the things that has changed in recent times is actually the availability and the affordability of no-code and low-code platforms. And in stark contrast to this, the lack of supply and the rising costs involved in hiring developers. So you can see this tweet on the left is from a maker who built an app in less than an hour. So again, less than an hour using a no-code tool. And uh, the sarcastic retweet is on the right-hand side is actually from another no-code creator. And he says, well, I can whip up the same thing in React Native, just give me a few weeks to build a backend auth, find a component library, a router, and to figure out how to connect everything to Redux Saga, and we're good to go. So that direct stark contrast between being able to build and release something out into the wild with less than an hour's worth of work with no code, as opposed to taking weeks to do it in React Native. Add to the mix the increase in people trying to start their own online businesses, especially during the pandemic, and you now have a really healthy demand for platforms that help non-developers build great products quickly, easily, and cheaply. On top of that, the latest no-code platforms offer far more flexibility than the old school what you see is what you get options that people traditionally associate with WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix. If there's one thing that's going to democratize the tech industry, it's the no-code movement. 
because not knowing how to write code is no longer a barrier to entry to building a software business. But how does this relate to APIs? You might be thinking that no-code tools really only help on the front end, but there are a number of platforms like Pipedream and Xano, which I'll be demoing today, that allows you to connect APIs at a production scale really quickly with a very little coding knowledge necessary. This reduces the need to write boilerplate code, deal with the hassle of authentication, and the challenge of managing complex infrastructure. So let's take a look at a little scenario. Meet Bob from marketing. Bob is a one-man powerhouse, the only person in your company's marketing team. Because he is so busy, he's come up with the idea that he wants to be able to use AI to help him write copy for the Twitter posts that the company wants to post on their Twitter account. So Bob wants to be able to enter a phrase into Google Sheets. Every hour, he wants an AI platform to suggest um, a bunch of copy based on the phrase that he's provided, which then should get added into Google Sheets. Because Bob's a busy guy, he wants a Slack message to be sent to him to tell him that the copy is ready for review. Bob knows that AI is not quite there yet, so he's probably gonna jump into Google Sheets, have a look at the suggested copy, make some edits and tweaks, and then from there within Google Sheets, he wants to be able to just push a button and have that copy sent out magically as a tweet on the company's Twitter account. After that, he wants to receive a Slack message confirming that that tweet has actually been sent. So today I'm gonna to show you how that can all be done in a platform called Pipedream. Before I do, I just wanna add that I have absolutely no affiliation with Pipedream at all. Um, I just thought that it was quite a good platform to use for the purpose of this demo. So how we go about doing that? So first of all, we have the Google Sheets and I've set this up so that we have um, a column for my copy idea. And this is where Bob is going to enter in all the copy ideas that he has. So he's given us one that's AI generated text can help write great copy. We've also got a second sheet within the Google Sheets where I'm also going to insert in the AI generated text. I could have done this in the first one, but I just want to make it really clear um, where the copy is coming into. So from there, heading over to Pipedream, we're gonna start off with a workflow. So Pipedream gives you a whole bunch of different triggers that you can use to start the workflows. Because Bob wants to run this every single hour, um, he wants the AI to constantly be giving him copy suggestions. We're gonna start off with just a simple cron scheduler, which will schedule this entire flow every single hour. And of course, you could customize this how you want. So right now, of course, this is triggering every hour, but there's nothing that's actually being triggered. So the next step, is what do we actually want to do? We want to go and get the prompt that Bob has written in Google Sheets and return it back into Pipedream. So there are a lot of pre-made apps already in Pipedream. You can see all these different integrations that they've got. And we're going to start off with the Google Sheets one. Great. So really easy. All we want to do is get the prompt from Google Sheets. So we're just going to go get values from the sheet. I've already authenticated, so I've done this using just a simple OAuth, your standard social authentication that you would do. And it's asking me for a spreadsheet ID. So going to be heading over here and we're going to copy the spreadsheet ID and paste it in. Next, it's asking for a range. Now this is actually Google Sheets syntax. So what that means is it wants to know which of the sheets you should be pulling from. So we're pulling from my copy ideas and we're looking at A2, that's, the, that's where we wanna start. After that, we can go down to the rest of the A column. If Bob wants to enter in more prompts, that's great, we can do that. So we pass it the sheet name, my copy ideas, and we're gonna start at A2 and go all the way down to the rest of uh, column A. So you can see here, this code has already been generated for us. We don't need to do anything. The credentials are already set, um, it's, telling uh, Google Sheets exactly what it wants, and it's gonna return the response.data. Of course, if you want to customize this, you are more than welcome to, but you don't need to. It's doing all the heavy lifting for you. So I'm just gonna change this to make the title a little bit better. So that flow is called get copy idea. Just gonna deploy that, and we're gonna run it. Again, this is triggered every hour, but of course, for the purpose of testing, we're gonna manually actually run it. And so you can see it's gone to my Google Sheet. 
It's pulled from my copy ideas and it's return an array. And the first thing is our AI generated text can help write great copy. So that was the prompt that was already there. If we had more prompts in the spreadsheet, it would return the rest of those as um, objects in the array. So from there, we're going to run a little bit of Node.js code. So I have to admit, this is more of a low code flow than a no code flow because Bob wants to use AI. So in order to do that, I'm using the Deep AI, um, which has a text generation API. Ordinarily, you would go and pop some text into this box here. You'd submit it, and then the AI would return a chunk of text based off of your prompt. They've also got a curl request, which is quite neat. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to head on down to JavaScript. So nice and simple, we're just going to, uh, ordinarily what you would do is you would provide the text. So the your text here is where you would put your text in. So we're going to copy this piece of code, head on back over to Pipedream, and we're just going to paste it in. While we're here, I'm just going to clean this up. And we don't need this async function. So just going to remove that. So you can see this is like really light tidying up of some of the code. You know, format that a little bit better. And I do want to return the response rather than just console logging it. Great. And we're done, except that we don't want to be passing your text here. We want to actually pass the prompt that was pulled from Google Sheets. And this is where Pipedream makes it so easy. So if I head back up, remember this was what uh, the value that we wanted. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the path. And that's what we're going to be feeding over as the text to the AI API. Now, of course, if there were more um, prompts, uh, we could loop through them really easily and feed it through the steady stream of all the different prompts. In this case, we only have one so far from Bob. Great. I'm just going to rename this to make it a little bit clearer. So again, what we're doing is we have pulled the prompt from Google Sheets, and we are now pushing it out to our DPI API to try and get some text back from them. So if I trigger this again, you can see that that's all run. And we now have, um, we've got an ID returned as well as output. So this is the text that the AI has generated. You can see it's it's not super great. AI generated text can help write great copy and paste. Um, so yeah, this is quite a chunky piece of text. We would not be able to fit this in a tweet. And, and frankly, it's not very good. So it makes sense that Bob wants to review it and make some changes before it actually gets tweeted out. So in order for Bob to actually be able to get it, we need to return, I want to return both the copy, original copy idea and the AI generated text into the Google Sheets because he's not going to be signing into Pipedream. He doesn't want to deal with any of this sort of stuff. So selecting Google Sheets. And we're just going to add a single row. Again, authentication is already handled. I'm just going to pick the drive and the spreadsheet. And it's asking me which sheet I want to actually add it to. So it's our AI generated text sheet. This is the first column, right? So it's asking, what do you want to insert in the first column? So for here, this is the original prompt that Bob gave us. So if we just head back to get copy idea, if you remember that return value, it had the AI generated text can help write great copies, just select that path. So that's going to come back in the first column. In the second column, we actually want the AI-generated text that came back. So we're going to go through, traverse through, get the return value. And again, all you need to do is select the path. Really, really straightforward. So that is done. It's going to insert the prompt into my copy idea and the AI-generated text into the AI-generated text column. Great. So just running that now. Excellent. So 
we've got a new piece of copy that's come through and it says that we've updated two of the cells. So you can see that that's come through, piped through to Google Sheets. And because we got a new piece of copy, because we hit the API again, um, we now have a different piece of copy. Uh, AI generated text can help write great copy. I just have not considered the power of it, just like the one on Reddit. Again, not, not the best piece of copy, but that's okay. We're gonna go tell Bob that this has come through so that he can come and have a look and edit it. And the way he wanted that done was through a Slack message. Very hipster, our Bob is. So we're gonna send a direct message. And again, I've already authed with Slack, which was super, super easy. Um, so once we picked the workspace, I'm gonna send it through to myself first. We're not gonna bother Bob with this test run. And then we have the text. So we should probably say something like, here's the latest AI copy for review. And I wanna actually give him the spreadsheet link. So really making life as easy as possible for Bob. And I'll just name this bot as well. Great. Yeah, there are a couple of other things that you could customize if you wanted to. I might just rename that to send a Slack message. So if we run it now, don't forget we are running this fresh every time we run it. So um, the AI generated copy, there'll be you know a new piece of copy coming through. Um, we'll be adding that to the Google Sheets, sending the Slack message. So that looks all good. If we head back over, you'll see there's a second piece of copy that's come through. So we've got the prompt and the second piece of copy. Also not the best. AI generated text can help write great copycat HTML. And we have the Slack message coming through. So of course, clicking on that um, link would take Bob back to the spreadsheet. Because um, this isn't super great, I think we can probably delete this one. That one's a little bit on the weaker side. So just gonna remove that. Um, and let's just say that Bob's pretty happy with this first AI generated text. Um, he's gonna just remove everything from the word Reddit on, like onwards because that doesn't fit in a tweet. Um, so we're gonna use that copy there. Great. So, so far we've done most of what Bob's wanted um, and it's all been pretty straightforward. The things that we haven't yet done has been to really make use of Pipe Dreams uh, API endpoints and their webhooks. So we're gonna be doing that um, by fulfilling Bob's final requests, which are that he wants to be able to push a button in Google Sheets, and that's gonna send out that copy as a tweet through the company's Twitter account. And he also then wants another Slack message to tell him that that tweet has been sent. So we're gonna do that in Pipe Dream. So if we head on over to Pipe Dream and in the sources section, you can actually create um, endpoints, you can create webhooks. So we're just gonna do that. Just for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna remove the response body and just give it a name. So we're just gonna return to 200. Obviously we would set this up properly if it was real life production. Great. So they've given us uh, an endpoint. Excellent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to Google Sheets and I'm gonna use a different tool. I thought I would demo this one as well. This is called Epiphany um, and it's just a essentially an API tool within Google Sheets. Again, no affiliation with these guys. Um, I just think it's quite a good tool. So I'm just gonna paste that uh, endpoint that we had. We're gonna do a post. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna post over B2, which is our AI generated text. Again, you can post over B2 all the way through to the rest of the B column. And we're gonna save that. The reason why I'm saving this request is because we don't want Bob to have to set this up himself. He's not a software engineer. He doesn't know anything about development. All he wants to do is be able to push a button and it's all done for him. So what he would do if he came in here is go to add-ons and then go to the saved APIs where I've set everything up for him. 
and all he needs to do is hit that run button. So clicking on that then takes the B2 content and passes it over to our endpoint in PipeDream. Great, so you can see that it's piped through. We've got that body there being the text that we want to tweet out, nice and easy. So obviously now we need to actually set up the, um, the Twitter integration. So this is gonna be the trigger when, um, so the whole time obviously we've got our um, endpoint that's waiting and then once we've got the trigger, that's when we're gonna head on over to Twitter. And just gonna search for post. So here again, already authenticated the company's account. So our status, um, pretty easy. That's the beauty of Pytream is that you can, you know, just easily traverse through all the previous steps that you've done, you know, the event that you've received. So what we have is the event body, and you can already see as well that it gives you, shows you what it is currently. And so we've picked event body, it's already done all the code for you. Again, you can, you know, totally customize it if that's what you would prefer. Great, so that should send the tweet out. The final thing that we want is for Bob to receive a Slack message telling him that the tweet has been sent. So same flow that we had before, adding Slack, adding the user this time around. Because we're probably intending to send out these tweets almost every day, um, we should probably tell Bob which one got tweeted out. So let's again use that event.body and maybe we'll say this tweet has been posted. Uh, won't bother naming the spot. You can though, again, you can do a couple of customizations there. Gonna deploy that workflow. So you can see over here, this is the Twitter page and you can see that there's nothing on it. So what we would expect to happen when we trigger this, um, when we hit the run, is that it then sends um, the AI generated text that Bob has approved over to here. Um, and then it will tweet it out through the company's Twitter account and also send Bob a Slack message. Now, I actually, uh, when I was recording this, I forgot to turn the trigger on. You can see it's currently off, which is why we're just waiting at the moment. Great. So now that we've turned it on, we're actually listening for events. And I'm just going to have to trigger that again. Great, so that's piped through. You can see that that event has come through. Body has come through. We've got the tweet happening and that Slack message got sent as well. So if we head back over to the Twitter account, refresh this, you can see it's there. AI generated text can help write great copy. I've not considered the power of it, just like the one on Reddit. And that Slack message has come through as well, telling Bob that the um, tweet got posted. Great, so that's how it works in Pipedream. There was a bit of work to it, um, but it's really nice because it allows people like Bob who doesn't wanna bother a developer and doesn't have development skills to be able to do all of this to automate his workflow. There is another demo that I will show you using a different platform. Again, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever um, called Xano. So with Xano, um, it's actually got database tables created for you rather than using Google Sheets. So I've just got an ID created out. And these are the three prompts. So Bob's given us two more prompts. He says, I love dogs because, and API Days Australia was a great experience. In this column is where we expect the AI generated text to come back. And he's going to then maybe make some edits and approve them if he thinks that they are ready to go out. So this is the database that you can set up within Xano. After that, you can head on over and set up functions. So here you can see that the inputs, it's basically my table, the model that I've already set up, um, pulling in the prompt, gonna query all those records. Um, so I'm just gonna grab everything from the table and call that get database prompts. Um, I'm then gonna loop through, grab the prompt. So every single thing in the prompt column and return that as item. And then I'm gonna loop through each of those. So with this, I'm hitting a different AI API, it's called Deep AI, and we're gonna do a post request. We are going to pass it um, the text attribute, which is going to be the prompt 
that was in our database. And then we've, of course, got our headers with API key. What was really cool about this is that you can actually just copy and paste your, your curl request in here and it'll auto populate all of this for you. And then for me, all I need to do was change the text attribute to be our variable, which is pulled from our database. So then from here, I've just created a variable with the return response. And then I'm going to edit our database and make our AI generated text column. We're going to insert in the AI text that has come back from the AI API. I probably should have named these a little bit better. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I was in a rush when I was doing this one. Um, cool. And then we have the response. Uh, this one, I've just decided to return the, the last one that has come back. But what should be happening when we do this is that it's actually taking our three prompts from Bob going out to the AI and getting text generated for all three prompts and returning it back into our database. Great. So what we actually show, though, as the result is just the last one, which is what they've um, done for API Days Australia it was a great experience. So that's the last one that shows there. But if you head on over into the database and open this one up, you can see all three have been populated with AI generated text. So let's just say that Bob likes the look of number one and he likes the look of number two, but is not so keen on what was written for API Days Australia. He's probably going to write custom text for that himself rather than rely on the AI. So what's really cool with Xano is that you've got API endpoints. Um, some are auto-generated, some you can create yourself. So with this, I've got an approved copy. Um, and what I've done basically is I'm just going to query all the records in our database. And I've also added a custom query to say that we want approved by Bob being true. And this is really nice and easy. Um, again, I would call it maybe a low code uh, rather than no code tool. But you can see this is pretty straightforward. The database AI generated text is what I called it. Dot approved by Bob equals true. Really, really simple. So what we would expect when you hit this particular endpoint is for it to return only those um, where the approved by Bob is true. So those entries in the database. So what's cool is that they have Swagger documentation ready to go for you. So this is that endpoint that I was talking about that is um, terribly named, and I apologize. Executing that, you can see, has returned our two objects. So the first one being the AI-generated text one, um, and the second one being the I love dogs, because both of those have been approved by Bob. Um, so it's not returning the API Days Australia one because that one was not approved by Bob. So Swagger is all set up, ready to roll for you. We also have an endpoint URL. Clicking on that, if you just paste that into a browser, there you go. You've got your objects right there. Um, so again, it's the same two AI-generated text that has been approved by Bob and the I love dogs prompt as well. So what's really handy with this is your front end can consume this really, really easily. Um, it's all ready to go, including with the Swagger documentation, which is nice. Great. So before I continue, I just want to say that while I've been talking about the benefits of no code and low code tools, these aren't a silver bullet to every software's problems or every company's problems. You can see here this tweet that says, sometimes it's still easier to just write a couple lines of code rather than trying to stick together Zapier, Airtable, MailChimp, et cetera. Um, and I really liked the last line of this tweet that says, I think the future is a mix of some code and no code. So what does this all mean for the tech industry? So first and foremost, I want to kind of allay any fears that people have, no code does not eliminate the need for software engineers. There will always be a demand for the expertise that developers and engineers provide, especially when it comes to tech stacks with complex architecture and a heterogeneous ecosystem, platforms that require high levels of customization. I mean, keep in mind that low code and no code tools find this a little bit challenging given their modular nature. And also those that are experiencing high levels of growth because a lot of the low code, no code platforms have limits. For example, rate limiting to the number of requests that can be made. In addition, there's always the risk when you rely on a third party platform to power your products, whether that's a security risk 
or just the question of are they going to be around in five to ten years time but no code tools can make our lives easier for startups you can now move quickly and easily um, and you can create prototypes that you can take to the market within days rather than months, which means that you can start validating your ideas earlier. For marketing and design teams, you can now update dynamic content yourself without needing an engineer to help you deploy it. And you can also easily visualize data without needing any SQL skills or even direct access rights to the database. For engineers, you're now freed from the burden of writing large amounts of often really uninteresting code to automate repetitive tasks, empowering you to do higher value add work or simply work that interests you. Low code and no code tools just give us all more options. And the next era of tech companies will be embracing these tools when they make sense to use. And of course, building custom tooling when it doesn't. Just want to say thank you very much for listening to this talk. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, um, you can find me online at Twitter, uh, at Carmen H. Chung, and on LinkedIn, I managed to get my full name there, which is Carmen Chung. Um, and I also write a newsletter on tech news, which is found at substack.com slash this week in tech. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was awesome. Um, that, was, that was really cool. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for that. And and like you said, we might not have time for questions, but your information is available on slides if people want to get in touch. Um, yeah, thank you. That was that was awesome.